Good evening. Welcome to another Spirit Life broadcast. Pastor Ken, we're so glad you've joined in with us this evening. As we do every time we come together uh, to tabernacle around the Word of God, uh, we always take communion. Amen. And in Mark chapter 14, beginning with verse 22, Jesus said, And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and break it and gave it to them and said, Take eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when he had sung in him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. So tonight we're going to uh, partake of the Lord's Supper, the bread which represents the broken body of Jesus, by whose stripes we're healed, and the cup which represents the remission of sins, our eternal forgiveness, our sonship, Amen. Our adoption. We thank God so much for that. So let's partake tonight. The bread first and then the cup. And Father, we thank you so much that in you we live and move and have our being. We're so glad to be a part of the kingdom of God. We thank you, Lord, that you would Sanctify my lips afresh. Thank you, Lord, all of you and none of me. Think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords the words of life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You know, John says in John 14, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled. We know that. You know, right now it's it's a very uh, uh, it's a very tempestuous time all over. Uh, so many trials and testing, so many fatalities, uh, so many families unfortunately uh, have lost loved ones right at this holiday season. You know, just like the devil. You know, he he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to divide. He comes to uh, uh, separate and. We know it's him. We know it's him. Jesus said, the thief, Satan, the work of Beelzebub comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But he said, I've come to give you life, and that more abundantly. Life to the full until it overflows. Amen? In abundance to the full until it overflows. And we know that that's the will of God, but we have to occupy. Amen? until Jesus comes. In this world, John 16, in this world, we're going to have tribulation, verse 33, but be of good cheer. Jesus said, I have overcome this world. Amen. So what do we want to do in the midst of this uh, season of, of, of struggle, in this season where I, it is feast and famine, you know, some are feasting right now, and some are in famine, but uh, the word of God is very clear. Uh, we who are strong, uh, we have to bear the infirmity of the weak and not please ourselves. And that's just not, you know, someone who is uh, uh, weak uh, physically or mentally. Uh, that also can pertain to um, weeping with those who weep and rejoicing with those who rejoice. You know, getting and, and helping those who Right now might might be in a, a famine season. Uh, they might be in a season of uh, where the, the COVID-19 uh, has come and, and riddled their body. And uh, they're just having a hard time functioning. But the word of God says, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And one of the things that, that I've learned and one of the things that uh, it's really good to do when you feel heaviness and when you feel uh, just an oppression on your life 
it is good to just begin to lift your hands and praise the beauty of holiness. Psalms 22 talks about, Lord, you are holy and you inhabit the praises of your people. You know, it's just good to praise God and to thank him. Lord, I bless you tonight and I thank you for all of your benefits. I thank you that you've forgiven me of all my iniquities. You, you've healed every sickness and disease that would come against my body. You've crowned me with loving kindness and tender mercies. You've satisfied my mouth with good things. My youth is being renewed like the eagles. Lord, I just praise you and I just thank you and I worship you. Amen. And, and you know, it says over there in the book of uh, 2 Chronicles 20, you know, uh, uh, Jehoshaphat and the people of God, they were in a real predicament. They were being surrounded uh, by their enemies. And, and, and Jehoshaphat looks up to the Lord and he says, Lord, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. He says, I don't know what we're going to do, Lord. We're surrounded by our enemies, but our eyes are upon you. And the word of the Lord comes to him. And, and, and the Spirit of God tells them, I, I want you to just begin to praise the beauty of holiness. I want you to just begin to praise me and thank me. Amen. And they called on Judah to go first. Amen. Judah means praise. And Judah goes first and they begin to sing, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy endures forever. And the word of God says they begin to praise the beauty of holiness. And as they begin to praise and thank the Lord, the word of God says ambushments come. Divine help comes. And all of a sudden, there is a turnaround in this very tempestuous situation. They go from the hunted to the hunter. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, God knows how to turn it around for you. He knows how to turn your mourning into dancing. So let not your heart be troubled. I want to just read this out of a Second Chronicles uh, 20. It says um, uh, in verse 20, it says, And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Decaia. And as they went forth, Jehoshua stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And when they had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness. And as they went out before the army, and to say, praise the Lord. For his mercy endures forever. And when they begin to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah. And they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them. They found among them in abundance both riches with dead bodies, precious jewels, which they had stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves 
in the valley of Barak, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the same place was called the valley of Barak unto this day. You know, uh, Jesus told his disciples, don't let your heart be troubled. Amen. I always have an answer for you. Yes, in this world, there will be tribulation. There will be uh, times of trial. Uh, but God always takes his people out of the valley of devastation into the mountain of restoration. Amen. And uh, there might be a devastating uh, circumstance, a very distasteful circumstance you're facing right now. But be of good cheer. Amen. Be of good cheer. Lift your hands and begin to praise the beauty of holiness. Begin to thank and praise God. Amen. Even if you don't feel like laughing, just, you know, just say, ha, 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 ha. And what are you saying? You're saying, I am not going to let this circumstance have its way with me. I'm going to praise God. I'm going to sing. I'm going to rejoice because he inhabits the praises of his people. The promise of God is, I will come in the midst of your praise. Let not your heart be troubled. Lift your hands up. Praise the beauty of holiness. Sounds like the book of Philippians. It says uh, over there in Philippians 4, 6, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderations be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all power of comprehension, is going to keep your heart and your mind in and through Christ Jesus. Somebody need to praise the Lord tonight. Amen. You need to praise the Lord. He's going to make a way for you. You might not know how. You say, man, it's getting closer to Christmas, Lord. And, and the hours on my job have been cut. And, and so many things have come against me. And, and then some of my loved ones have been ill. And it just seems like everything's very twisted right now. I'm in a very ambiguous situation. And, you know, things are just so obscure for me. I can't see my way. Lift your hands up. Psalms 47 says, well, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. He's going to make a way for you. He's going to make a way out of no way. Amen. Isaiah said this way. He's going to make a way in your wilderness, and he's going to bring rivers through your desert. Let's look at that. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. 43, you know, we just rejoice tonight in the Lord. This is what Isaiah said. He said, uh, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Uh, Isaiah said that, you know, God is so awesome. You know, he, it was Isaiah 32, 27. He says, you know, Lord, you made the heavens and the earth by your great outstretched arm. And there's nothing too hard for you. Amen. Uh, Isaiah saw Jehovah as the God of the impossible. Nothing's too hard for our God. And he says, uh, uh, remember not the former things. Neither consider uh, the things of old. Amen. Isaiah said, God got something new. <laughs> yes, he does. He says, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? Another translation says, can't you perceive it? Can't you tell it's happening? He says, what's going to happen? He says, I'm going to make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Glory to God. Isaiah says, you know what? God's going to do this, something new. He's going to do something new for you. I know he's blessed you in the past. 
I know he's done some mighty things for you. But right now, in this time, in this season of your life, in the midst of this COVID-19, in the midst of the, the lack of hours on the job, in the midst of circumstance and situations, in the midst of the devastation with family members, some going home to be with the Lord and, and some being sick and, and having to uh, very gingerly walk through this time. God says, I'm going to do something new for you. You've never seen it. Your eyes have never seen it and your hands have never touched it, but I'm still going to do it. He says, can't you perceive it? Can't you see that I'm working your way? Can't you see there's been a blade? There's been a, there's been a, just a, a little light at the end of the tunnel. He says, well, follow that light. Amen. Follow that light. I am going to do a new thing. He says, you got to perceive it. I'm going to make a way in your wilderness. He said, I'm going to guide you through this obscurity. I'm going to guide you through this circumstance. Amen. And I'm going to bring rivers through your desert. God said, I'm going to refresh you. I'm going to take care of you. Amen. Before you know it. I'm going to I'm going to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever ask or think. Amen. I'm going to renew your mind and give you peace. Amen. I'm going to flow my river through your spirit. Amen. And you're going to uh, perceive you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus like you never did before. There's going to be an uprightness. In your life, there's going to be a steadfastness in your life like never before. Amen. I'm going to give you provision. Amen. I'm going to take care of your money situation. I'm going to make sure the lights stay on. I'm going to make sure the mortgage is paid, the rent is paid. I'm going to make sure that car note is paid. Amen. I'm going to make a way in your wilderness and I'm going to bring rivers through your desert. Just perceive it tonight. Be still. Know that he is God. Amen. Be still. Praise the beauty of holiness. Lift your hands tonight and watch the ambushments from the kingdom of God. Destroy the work of the enemy. Amen. And bring wholeness and soundness into your situation. You know, Jesus said, uh, in his earthly ministry, uh, when he came on the scene, uh, it says that um, there was delivered unto him. He went into the synagogue and uh, the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. He found himself in the word. He found himself in the word. You know, there's a word from the Lord for you. And I know, you know, God uses many people. He uses his, his ministers, amen, to speak life, amen. But there's nothing like finding your word for yourself and connecting you and the Holy Spirit in the word of God. There's nothing like it. And you just know in your knower, God is speaking to you, amen. Nothing like it. So it says he found himself in the word uh, and uh, it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed. Now this is the message that Jesus preached. This is the message that Jesus preached. Amen. This is the message that he preached. Amen. That opened the blind eyes that caused the lame to walk and the deaf to hear. Amen. Uh, even to the raising of the dead. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. I'm going to break the bands of poverty. There's an anointing that's going to come off me, Jesus said, and it's going to get on you and it's going to destroy the work of poverty. He says, he sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives. Recover the sight of the blind. Set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable 
year of the Lord. And then look what it says in verse 22. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. They said they, they, they just stood in amazement as they heard the gracious words that came out of his mouth. The words of love, the words of joy, the words of peace, the words of reconciliation and restoration. It said the people just marvel as they heard the gracious words that came out of his mouth. You know, I believe that even in the midst of this season, for many of you who are facing very challenging situations. If you'll just continue to let life flow out of your mouth. Amen. Just praise God. Just praise God according to his word. Amen. Let the words of Jesus Christ dwell in you richly. In all of its wisdom. The word of God says, Colossians 3.16, teaching and admonishing one another in songs and hymns and spiritual songs. Amen. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. Let the words of your mouth. Amen. Be gracious. Let others hear the gracious words that are coming out of your mouth. Amen. If you know someone who's uh, contacted the, uh, the virus, let them know. Amen. This too will pass. Amen. I'm praying for you. Amen. And God's going to uh, break the bands of wickedness. He's going to undo the heavy burdens. He's going to cause the oppression in your life to be moved and you'll go free. He's going to destroy every yoke. Let people hear the gracious words of Almighty God proceeding out of your mouth. Lift your hands tonight. And give God praise. Thank him for what he's done. Thank him for what he's doing. The new thing that he's doing. And say out of your mouth, Lord, I perceive. I perceive you're doing a new thing. You're making a way in my wilderness. And you're bringing rivers through my deserts. And I thank you and I praise you for the gracious words that you have spoken to me out of your word. You know, it says in there in Luke chapter 8, Luke chapter 8, it says, um, it came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the 12 were with him. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod Stort, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substances. You know, it says that <clears throat> Jesus, he went about preaching his message the gracious words, amen, the people heard. And he had these three women, and they were testifying, amen. As he preached, they were giving testimonies of how he healed them, how he cast the devil out of them, amen. And they supported him in his ministry, amen. I believe God wants to... Uh, do some wonderful things for you. Amen. He, 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 he's, he's waiting on your praise right now. Amen. So don't be worried when you can worship. Don't be worried when you can worship. Begin to praise the beauty of holiness. Amen. And watch God reveal to you your next step. It's interesting. I just want to show you two examples that really uh, touched my heart. Uh, Luke chapter five, Luke chapter five, you know, 
Jesus is trying to teach his disciples that there is profit in serving him. And so he asked Peter, he says, uh, uh, let me borrow your boat and I I'm going to preach to the people. And it says in Luke chapter five, it says, and he saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draw. So uh, Jesus uh, asked Peter, can, can I use your boat? You know the story. And Peter said, sure. And then Jesus is trying to teach him uh, kingdom principles. He says, okay, uh, you let me use your boat. Now, I've got a blessing for you. There, there's always a blessing in entertaining the word of God. There's always a blessing in doing what the Lord asks us to do. And so, you know, but Peter, <clears throat> he's not acclimated as of yet to the ways of the kingdom. And so he says in verse five, Peter said to the master, we toiled all night, we've taken in nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I'll let down the net, singular. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, he was shocked at all that were with him at the drop of the fishes which they had taken. Peter didn't fully understand at this time the way of the kingdom, that as you give to God, it's coming back to you. Amen? We know God don't pay every Friday, but when he does, it's retroactive. But Peter didn't understand this, but watch this. In the book of Matthew chapter 17, Matthew chapter 17, Peter has grown in the things of God. Amen. And Jesus says to him, when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, doth not your master pay tribute? Does your master pay taxes? He says, yes. And when he was coming to the house, Jesus prevented him saying, what thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? He says, now, the kings and the, the mighty uh, emperors of the day, you know, uh, where do they get their money from? Who do they tax? Do they tax their own or do they tax the strangers? Peter says, that's an easy question. They tax the strangers. Peter said from the end, strangers. Jesus said unto him, then are the children free. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast a hook and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and thee. Now Peter is grown. Do you see? Do you see what's going on here? In Luke 5. Jesus tells Peter, he says, let down your nets and you're going to get a trot of fish. You're going to get a, a just an amazing amount of fish. Peter can't see it. He doesn't know the way of the kingdom. And so he lets down one net and the fish begin to come into that net. And, and, and it's so many fish, he has to call his partners and the boats are sinking because of the draw of fish. 
But now it's later. And Jesus, uh, the same test comes up. And he says, Peter, um, whether you know it or not, I, I, I heard them talking to you about does your master pay taxes? And um, he says, so we're not going to offend? He says, I want you to take a hook. And the first fish that gets on that hook, he says, I want you to bring it in, open up its mouth. Amen. And we're going to get uh, tax money for myself and for you. Peter doesn't hesitate. He has learned that it pays to hear what Jesus is saying. It pays to abide in the word of God and that you cannot be in the word of God without provision manifesting. My time is up. I thank you for yours, but know this. Let not your heart be troubled. God is making a way for you. Amen. He's making a way in your wilderness. He's bringing rivers through your deserts. This is Pastor Ken Gang saying, bless the Lord. Keep praising him. There's a turnaround tonight for you. The Lord bless you. Heaven smile upon you.